when I was a kid, growing up, I was in a unique position in many ways. I sort of had two homes. <clears throat> I lived legally and primarily with my parents, with my mom and dad, and later on my sister, and even later on my brother. But I would stay a lot, sometimes for extended time. Sometimes I'd stay the night a few nights in a row, particularly in the summer, uh, at my great-grandma's house, which was, you know, 25 or so minutes away from where I lived with my immediate family. But I was in a position that was both wholly unique and also very common. You see, I was pretty much the only boy, like the only kid before my sister came along at all, really, uh, of my race in my immediate neighborhood. I was the only kid of my race on my Little League baseball team, for the most part. Other children of my race sometimes came and went in my neighborhood, my little league sports teams. I was homeschooled. Um, but uh, yeah, it, g it gave me a unique perspective. I also happen to be very sheltered. And I don't think it was necessarily... Um, motivated by race. It was motivated partly by socioeconomic issues, but mainly I was just my parents' first kid. They were very protective of me. My mother, very, you could argue, overprotective of me at the time. I don't blame her for it, though. I don't think she can be blamed for how protective of me she was as a kid. Again, particularly being her first kid, particularly given the kind of person my father was, the kind of person she was. I think she wanted me to grow up to be better, and her idea of going toward that was to be very, very protective and sheltering of me. But I would play in the neighborhood with other kids, and I was on a little league baseball team for a while. And in my neighborhood, and on my baseball team, I was the only kid of my race... In, in that neighborhood and in uh, and on my little league team. The only time I ever saw other kids of my race in little league games was uh, when we would play against other teams from around the region, and sometimes you'd have teams of all children that racially matched me. It wasn't so much that it was a bother to me that I looked different from all the other kids in the neighborhood and all the other kids on my team. But it, it led to this little nagging feeling of, of isolation in in the back of in the back of my in the back of my mind. Sometimes I I wanted to, you know, I wondered what it would like, what it was, what it would be like, um, if I lived in a neighborhood that was made up of my own racial makeup, major, uh, majority-wise. And, but it never, it didn't really bother me so much. Um, just the fact that I was the only kid of my race growing up in that neighborhood. Now, when I would go stay with Grandma, a little bit of a different story. Um, my group of friends running around there, pretty, pretty multicultural. There were some kids of my race. There were some kids of other um, majority races in certain areas in the region. Uh, there were some kids of, uh, of a third race, ethnicity, however you want to put it. 
But um, yeah, it was, it was great, and we and we didn't really think about race. We didn't even really think about each other's races. You know, I had a couple of friends. They're Hispanic, right? Either they were either first or second generation American born. Mexican Americans. I want to say second. I want to say their parents were first generation American born, and it was their grandparents who were actual immigrants. So I grew up very close to Mexican culture. <laughs> I remember there's a story, uh, I don't remember this particularly because apparently this was when I was really little. Like these kids, I'm 25 and I've known. These guys, uh, these these Mexican Americans, since I uh, for twenty three years since I was two, okay. But there were some kids in that neighborhood that were of my racial makeup. But in my actual home neighborhood where I lived with my family, I was the only boy of my race in that neighborhood and on my little league baseball team. And again, that didn't really bother me. I didn't think about it. It didn't affect me for the most part. There were some isolated incidences, incidents here and there. I remember one time I went to the library with my mother. And there were some older teenagers there. And uh, their, um, their, their race was of the majority for the area. And I remember I'm this little kid and I, and, I, and I was trying to use like the library computers or something, but I had some sort of issue. I had like a question I wanted to ask them, right? And as a little kid, I looked up to the, you know, to older kids, to, you know, teenagers. So I go up to them and I tell them, excuse me, uh, could you, I don't remember the exact question I asked them, but I remember they turned to me. It was two girls. Um, again, they were the majority race for the area. I wasn't. For the, for the city, the, the neighborhood that I lived in. And they turned to me, and they just started laughing at each other. Or laughing to each other. And one of them said, I ain't talking to no... And then insert my race here. And then the SH word. Right? Keeping it family friendly. So I ain't talking to no race feces. Inserting... The, those are blanks to fill in. And at the time... I hadn't, I didn't even really have a concept of racism at the time, but what, what was, what I was worried about was the fact that they were swearing, the fact that they were using curse words in a public library. Like that was my issue with what they said. I, it did, it wasn't until years later that I even processed the racial component of it. Um, but yeah, they said, I ain't talking to no my race, S-H word. And, uh, and that struck me, again, not because of, of the racial issue, but just because of the fact that they were cursing in the library. That was what, that was what little, you know, six or seven year old or whatever me was worried about. But as time grew on and I became exposed to more and more people of various races and their stories, I always wondered, how, how can people just look at someone at the color of their skin and judge them on that? I mean, sure, there's racial stereotypes. You can look at someone's behavior, their gait, and you can make assumptions about them based on that. I'm not saying it's right, but at least I can process that. And little seven-year-old me in the, in the city library could have processed that much. But just looking at the color of someone's skin and making judgments on them based on that, I didn't even know that was a thing until later on in my life, even though it had happened to me. But I don't do that. (sighs) 
sure, I may make, you know, I may be involved in, in jokes about stereotypes. Like the people with their kids on the leash. Or the people sagging their pants on the ground and talking in movie theaters. You know. Especially if I'm with people of these various races that all find it in good fun. You know. But I don't look at the color of someone's skin and just judge them based on that. And if you want to know why, if you want to understand why it is that I don't do that or don't even really why I can't even get myself into the mindset of doing that if you want to understand why I struggle to process the mindset of doing exactly that of looking at the color of someone's skin and judging them based solely on that if you want to understand why I find that hard to even believe go back to the beginning of this video Listen to that story I told you with your eyes closed. Pretend you never saw my face. Pretend you never saw the color of my skin. And go back and listen to that story again with your eyes closed. You don't know the race of the person speaking. All you know is that they're not Latino or Hispanic. But go back and watch it again with your eyes closed. And I think you'll understand why I'm not racist. Not only that, but why racism doesn't make sense to me. Because when it comes to things like white supremacist math and things like that, that's one thing. But when someone tells me a story of how they grew up being treated a certain way because of their race and the area they lived in from being different. I assume they're telling the truth. I believe them. And I am empathetic to their situation. And if you want to understand them why that is, Re-listen to this video with your eyes closed and see whatever it is in your mind that comes to mind as you're listening to that story. This is North Sea Hero, signing out.